Hej, god morgon. Um, jag tar presentationen vidare på, på engelsk. Men som sagt är det vi gör som som jobbar på på grundamniak, men också inte utelukka andra lösningar till att få en utslippsfri amniak. In uh, Yara, um, as indicated, we um, we started in uh, 1905 in in Norway based upon hydropower and uh, green uh, fertilizer production. Seven onwards, uh, we moved to uh, to the current ammonia process uh, based upon the harbor boss process instead of the Birkeland aid on on direct nitrate. And the reason for that was that indeed uh, hydrogen production and then the harbor boss process was more energy efficient than uh, than the Birkeland aid process. So from 27 to to 1991, we actually have been producing green ammonia in uh, in Norway. Uh, the last 15 years, uh, we um, so when we moved uh, from from tw from 91 to to gas-based uh, ammonia production, uh, we still managed to uh, to reduce from that baseline to reduce our uh, greenhouse gas emissions uh, by uh, by half. The last 15 years, uh, we've been setting targets now towards uh, 2025 to. Uh, Take another 10%, and we have ambitions uh, ambition to uh, to become climate neutral in our uh, full value chain by uh, by 2050. In order to to achieve that, uh, I think a few of, of the, the things and I, uh, a few of the Q and A's I saw uh, coming by uh, is that in principle uh, we state, and that's uh, also what we have been demonstrating until 1991. That we are working with uh, with proven technologies. So the alkaline electrolysis to produce green hydrogen, uh, the harbor boss process to produce ammonia, uh, as well as uh, hydropower, but mainly solar and wind, are uh, yeah currently uh, proven technologies. The challenge will be to combine the intermittency of solar and wind power with uh, with the um, electrolysis and 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 uh, the harbor boss uh, process. So real full answers on, on flexible operation to produce ammonia, uh, these have not been, been answered. Uh, but this automatically indicates that because of the renewable energy intermittency, um, there is a gap to be closed. Uh, a gap uh, somewhat on technology, uh, as well as a gap on, on uh, the additional cost which uh, will come with that. Um, in order to, to be able to, to uh, close the gaps, uh, we work on, on different uh, subjects. It, it's on, on fossil-free uh, fertilizer together with Swedish uh, Farmers Corporation uh, Landman to really see whether the, the, the food value chain uh, can be uh, become fossil-free, which uh, yeah, then green fertilizer takes, uh, takes uh, yeah, uh, a small but still significant part part in that value chain. Um, we work towards um, um, technology and, 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 and business models. Uh, so in Australia, we work together with Engie on, on solar uh, uh, hydrogen and solar um, ammonia um, and, and, and yeah, linked to, to the technology on, on that the sun doesn't always shine, as well as finding uh, then green customers. It's, it's yeah, linked to a new business model. If we look to the business models and technology, we worked in the Netherlands together with uh, Dutch uh, TSO uh, Gasuni, and um, we're taking their um, lower carbon hydrogen from, from uh, industrial symbiosis. But the technology part in that was that uh, Gasuni now has proven that an old gas pipeline can be converted to, to hydrogen. And that has been the first step for Dutch Gasuni to move towards uh, in, into the roadmap on, on the hydrogen grid in the Netherlands by 2030. On technology itself, um, it is known that in, in Porsche in, in our site, we work towards uh, to, together with uh, NEL electrolyzers on, on um, uh, their next generation uh, alkaline electrolyzers. But we also work with a startup company in the Netherlands, uh, which is a hybrid battery and, and um, and um, electrolyzer, to, uh, and that could solve the intermittency for our ammonia um, um, reactor. Uh, and that battleizer is expected to, to be demonstrated on very small scale at uh, the Waterfall uh, power plant uh, later this year. 
with the Institute for Sustainable Process Technology and, and a large consortium of, of, uh, of industry, uh, we're looking into uh, how uh, a one gigawatt uh, electrolyzer plant can be uh, uh, designed and, and uh, yeah, the ins and outs on that, on how to make that uh, competitive. If we then move to, to ammonia as an, uh, as an energy carrier, as a hydrogen carrier, or as a, as a shipping fuel, um, we, we, uh, we are associated in, in Ammonia Energy Association. Uh, we we'll try to, to, to see on, on how we can bring the world together and in, 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 in how that can work. And as indicated earlier, uh, we're part of the Ship FC project with uh, CMA Prototech and, uh, and IDISWIC. Um, the steps on, on how to, uh, to move towards um, decarbonized uh, ammonia is, is uh, the first steps which we're exploring in both in Portugal and as well as in Australia is to add uh, decarbonized hydrogen, uh, both in Portugal and as well as in, uh, in Australia, it's, uh, it's then uh, green hydrogen to be mixed in. Uh, when we mix that in, uh, we, we can up to a maximum of 10% um, uh, decarbonize our ammonia. If we then would move to larger scale, we need to start investing in, in an air separation unit to, to generate the nitrogen. And these steps then lead to increasing volumes of uh, decarbonized or green uh, hydrogen, uh, yeah, looking towards the future where we can uh, yeah, have a, a full uh, green or decarbonized um, uh, ammonia plant. Um, 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 uh, although we are focusing ourselves on um, the development towards green ammonia, we do not exclude uh, blue. And that can either be done to capture some of the CO2 coming from our ammonia plants, but it also can be uh, if we would be fed by uh, hydrogen in, in, in the pipeline, uh, which is uh, uh, where carbon capture happened at, at, at a source, so that we would run our uh, ammonia plant on, on, uh, on hydrogen uh, through pipeline only. And that's actually what we as indicated uh, we're doing in, in the Netherlands with a small volume, but we have a, a, a plant in Texas which is uh, entirely run on hydrogen. It's not uh, carbon neutral, but it's slightly lower carbon than, than if we would build a, a steam methane reform ourselves. If we then move to, to the uses of, uh, of uh, ammonia, uh, as indicated, uh, currently the use of ammonia is, is uh, 180 million tons with uh, the majority uh, linked to, to fertilizer. In the graphs uh, you see here, they, they are dated, um, we made this in 2018-2019, in, uh, uh, where we indicated that okay, the ammonia production uh, demand could double. Uh, so on top of the 180 million tons now, uh, another 200 million tons. Um, distributed on uh, ammonia as uh, to be used in, in, in power generation, uh, ammonia to be used as energy carrier for, 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 uh, uh, for storage and, 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 um, and use in, for example, uh, high heat uh, uh, energy and then the majority of that as as uh, as marine fuel. The volumes indicated here uh, were based on on at that time the the DVGL report uh, indicating that 25% of the shipping fuel could be ammonia. If you look to the the green uh, arrow, uh, it's uh, now the, based upon the getting to zero coalition numbers. Uh, we we'll talk about uh, more than 600 million tons of uh, of ammonia for shipping fuel only. Um, for, for Yara, uh, you know, we're looking into this because we are one of the largest ammonia producers. We are the largest in, in, uh, in ammonia trade. Uh, and we do have our infrastructure and um, ammonia, green ammonia as, as a shipping fuel um, uh, can go hand in hand with uh, green ammonia as a raw material for our, uh, for our fertilizers. So in, in, in principle, um, uh, we're then also positioned to, to, to assist in, in shipping uh, projects on, uh, on, on the, the safe handling of, of ammonia, because that's uh, the, the practice uh, we have been doing in, in, uh, yeah, since, in principle since we, we have been uh, established. Um, it's, it's, not, uh, it's not a given, uh, ammonia as a shipping fuel, uh, because uh, there, are, uh, there are barriers. Um, if these volumes for shipping fuel are going to be, be uh, that large, uh, an infrastructure is, is needed. 
but as I indicated, the, the, the starting point currently in the, in, in the world is, is decent with already uh, 20 million tons uh, of ammonia being tr traded uh, globally, so stored and, and shipped. Um, if you look to, to the, the, the fuel costs, uh, if, if uh, a new carbon-free uh, fuel uh, is being compared with, with uh, the, the current uh, fuels, of course, uh, there, there is a gap, um, and that gap has to be closed. It has to be closed by lowering the cost of, of production, and it uh, can be that it uh, has to be closed by, by uh, indeed, the CO2 pricing on, on in, in, in industry and, uh, and as, uh, as fuel. Um, the safety perception, um, uh, I name it perception. Um, uh, it is uh, um, an activity. Okay, it's not an activity. It's it, it's it's what we have to work on by by safe by to prove safe demonstrations. In principle, uh, the design of plants, the design of tanks, the design of our ammonia carriers is uh, yeah it is something that that is also a starting point. Regulatory uh, ammonia is not recognized as a shipping fuel yet. But we can learn from uh, methanol being a shipping fuel, which also uh, was not recognized. And then with respect to the technologies, we heard on CMR uh, Prototech uh, working on the fuel cell and the engine makers are also looking into uh, yeah, the, the combustion engines. So in principle, we believe that the, that the future will be different and that ammonia, uh, green ammonia as a shipping fuel can play a role in that. Thank you very much, uh, Rob Stevens. Just one question: uh, It's how, how poison is ammonia compared to other, for for instance, the gasoline? Um, if, if if you look to, to the the gasolines, uh, although I'm not really into the facts there, but but the the the, the hydrocarbons uh, in, in in certain cases. Um, have their hydrocarbon risks, and depending on how clean they are, uh, um, uh, yeah, uh, once in a while they catch a rise of, of um, uh, how to say it, it's a hydrocarbon with which uh, which can pose some some risk on the body. On on ammonia, uh, that's what, what I know is that uh, ammonia can be toxic uh, and, and burns your lungs in in high quantities. The beauty of ammonia is that you already smell it at uh, five ppm. So that you have an early warning system, whereas in the use of, of uh, natural gas, you have to add uh, something that you can smell in order to get an early warning. So there are some advantages on on the early warning system from from, from ammonia. But we are running our ammonia plants where you do not smell ammonia, so I'm, I'm sure that yeah we can design uh, the, the yeah uh, the further systems to watch shipping fuel as well.